Hey everyone, this is Uncle Devin, the children's drum cushionist. And again, this is We Nation Radio, the best in family friendly global beats for little feet. And we stream all types of wonderful music for children RB, hip hop, funk, jazz, reggae, go go, calypso, and African world rhythms. All that's age appropriate and culturally relevant, commercial free. And so we're glad to be able to have the author of that wonderful, awesome book that you just heard. Again, I hope you were inspired uh, by the book. And the book was Before She Was Harriet. And the author uh, is with us today and we get the chance to meet and speak with her. Please help me to welcome to the We Nation Reads segment, Lisa Klein Ransom. Welcome to We Nation Reads. Here's a short sample of her book. Hi. My name is Lisa Klein Ransom, and I am the author of Before She Was Harriet, illustrated by James Ransom. Here she sits, an old woman, tired and worn, her legs stiff, her back achy. But before wrinkles formed and her eyes failed, before she reached her twilight years, she could walk for miles and see clearly under a sky lit only with stars. Before she was an old woman, she was a suffragist, a voice for women who had none in marriages, in courts, in voting booths. Before her voice became soft and raspy, it was loud and angry, rising above injustice. What, what inspired you to write that, that awesome book before she was Harriet? Well, you know, when I was a young girl, one of the people who most inspired me was Harriet Tubman. I loved her story so much. And um, as I got older and decided I wanted to be a writer, I've written so many picture book biographies. And I'd always thought about writing Harriet Tubman's story. But as we know, there are so many books written about Harriet Tubman. I wasn't sure how I could write it differently than all the other books that had been written. But... I have a mom who has always inspired me and encouraged me. And my mom just turned 98 years old last Congratulations. Week. Yes, 98. And one of the things that happens when I'm with my mom is she loves to tell me stories from her past and tell me about her life and all the many lives that she's lived. And I thought maybe this is a way that I can tell the story of Harriet Tubman through all the many lives that she has lived. Oh, and I was going to ask you about your inspiration of touching on um, Ms. Tubman's uh, many different lives. Um, and th what did you do to be able to learn about uh, her life? Was it a lot of research that you had to do? Yes. And I, I was actually surprised because I grew up knowing that she was a conductor on the Underground Railroad. And that was really all that I knew about Harriet Tubman. And, and certainly that's big enough, right? That's pretty incredible. But then I had read um, a lot of research and uh, adult books about her life. And I discovered that she had done so many other wonderful, um, um, had so many other wonderful accomplishments, all basically in the service of others and helping other people that she was a spy and that she was a general and that she was a nurse caring for those wounded in the Civil War. And so I thought that would be a great way to tell her story, the way that she's always worked to help other people. And, you know, the other thing is that no matter what you do in life, you can use your skills to help others in many different ways. And she used every last skill that that was give, given to her uh, to be able to help others. And that was that to me was one of the most powerful things that you helped me to realize um, in your book. And uh, so that was great. So I know that you, um, you 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 have the experience of working with your husband. Uh, talk a little bit about the role that your husband played in this book. Well, yes, my husband and I have been collaborating on books together for, oh, 30 years or so now. He's an illustrator. He's illustrated about 80 books. And um, it was actually his idea to work on this book together. And he suggested I write the story of Harriet Tubman. And now people often think that I write the story and then I hand the story right over to James and he starts illustrating the next day. But typically... The process is, is we talk about an idea we want to work on together and I start writing. And then usually a year, two years, sometimes three years later, he will start illustrating. And so that's what happened here. I started writing, I finished. And then a year later, maybe, yeah, about a year later, he started illustrating this book. 
And, um, you know, I can, I get to go in the studio and get a sneak peek. And he shared, was sharing with me the illustrations. And this was the only time when I went in, I saw his illustrations and I was actually able to pick out what I thought should be the cover for Before She Was Harriet. Oh, so you picked out the cover, though. I he... picked out the cover, yes. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, I, I know it's an honor to be able to work with your husband. Um, my wife and I are the ones that started We Nation Radio, and we are uh, partners in the Uncle Devin show that actually created We Nation Radio. So we know how um, I, I know I'm just grateful that I can even spend that much time with my wife and that we are able to make this type of um enrichment in the children's lives through through the radio and uh so let me ask this so in terms of a writing um when did you first realize that you wanted to be a writer i have always loved writing i got a lot of encouragement from my teachers in elementary school and especially from my mother who always told me that she loved my writing and so um once i had a diary at age 10 and i started writing down stories about me and my family and friends, I think then I realized that I loved telling stories on paper. And I think that's when I realized I'd love to be a writer. Oh, awesome. Yes. About how, how many children's books have you written? I have written, uh, let's see, I think it's about 28 now. So I've written picture books, um, chapter books, middle grade novels, and I just published my very first young adult novel for teenagers. Oh, wow. So you yes. mentioned you did a picture book and a, uh, what was the second one you said? Uh, a chapter book. Chapter book. What's the difference between those two? So a picture book has a lot of illustrations and it's usually a shorter story. And then chapter book has short chapters with maybe okay. just a couple of, you know, just a few illustrations. Sure. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, that is awesome. I mean, I think again, the, the book is excellent and it really does a good job of, um, of, of humanizing um, Harriet Tubman, Tubman, because many times we hear the name and it becomes such a, uh, a, a bigger than life figure, but you broke it down in a very real way so that anyone, especially children can understand that she was just like us, Absolutely. but she had, she had passion and, uh, and, and she took it from there. So that, that is great. So let me ask you this. What do you do when you're not writing? Uh, well, I, of course, I love reading because it's, it's really impossible to be a writer without first being a reader. But I love uh, reading stories. I love in my, when I'm in my car, I listen to books on tape. I love being with my family. I'm a mom. I have four children who are adults from um, 22 to 29. So I love spending time with my children. I love watching movies, cooking. I love doing puzzles. And it, I guess a lot of things are related to words. And oh. so, yes. That's what I do. Awesome. Yeah. And where, where are you based out of? I'm based in um, Rhinebeck, New York, which is in the Hudson Valley region of New York. Oh, OK. All right. And what advice would you give to aspiring writers or people who uh, may want to do what you do for a living or just even uh, as a hobby? What advice would you give them? Well, I think writing requires a lot of practice. So you have to sit and spend a lot of time with your writing. So I think it's good to have a journal and just spend every day practicing your writing, writing whatever, writing stories about yourself and your friends and um, what's happening in your life without worrying about punctuation or anything else. And of course, reading. Reading comes first. Every time you read a book, you're learning about how to write character and dialogue and plot and setting. So always reading. Sure. And if someone wanted to uh, find out more about you and your books, um, how can they do so? I think the easiest way would be to go to my website, which is lisakleinransom.com. And it's L-E-S-A, Klein, C-L-I-N-E, Ransom, R-A-N-S-O-M-E.com. And what can we expect uh, in the future from you? Well, let's see. I am currently working on the story of, I've always been interested by in history. And so I'm currently working on a middle grade novel about a young girl named Letty, 1879. And she's traveling with her family from Mississippi to Nebraska as a homesteaders. And so we're seeing um, the story of people traveling West in covered wagon through the eyes of Black families during that time period. 
Oh, can't wait to see that or read that one. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, I just want to thank you for taking the time to share with us your book. Um, we're honored to be able to uh, have have you read that here on our station uh, before she was Harriet. And we wish you much, much more success. And we hope to be able to work with you again real, real soon. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here and so proud of the work that you're doing as well. Thank you. And there you have it. The one and only Lisa Klein Ransom, uh, the author of uh, she, before she was Harriet. But listen, we have to get out of here now. Thank you for joining us. And again, this is We Nation Radio. Uh, uh, we want to thank our sponsor, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and the Sherman Center for Early Learning in Urban Communities. And let me also say that the We Nation Read segment uh, is where we focus on children's books. Uh, and we are partnering, as I mentioned, with the Sherman Center uh, at UMBC uh, by offering this. And this project aims to ensure that early childhood educators at their partner schools have access to high quality, diverse children's books and opportunities to share ideas and insights about their use. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can go to uh, the information we'll post on, on how to find out more about the Diverse Books Project. But I've got to get out of here. Thank you for taking some time to, to share with us. And just remember, as I always say, life is a drum, so beat it.